Hello and welcome to this episode of CI Stories. This channel is not only about CIS, but particularly also about underwater robotics and uh, marine underwater technology. So uh, in the past weeks, there has been uh, a particularly interesting topic that has put uh, the light onto marine technology, uh, also for the general public, and that have been the sabotage attacks to the Nord Stream 1 and 2 pipelines in the Baltic Sea. And I'm certainly uh, no military expert or no expert in any of these things, but uh, I fairly well know uh, the background under the, the marine robotics and um, also some of the physics uh, that comes uh, to seismic sources and explosion sources. So uh, some of the information that has been given in the media is a bit contradictory and there's not uh, much uh, that is really known but there are some things uh, that I think are maybe not reported to a complete extent. One of the, the main conclusions always is that this is a, a big attack that can only be uh, run with, with resources that are uh, available to a big military. And actually, if you look at the numbers that are known, uh, I would... I would argue that this is not the case. It can definitely be, and probably it is, but it's not absolutely necessary. And I would argue that this attack could be done by uh, basically any unit who has a limited amount of money uh, and a very small thing. So let's look a little, little bit into the details. So what is known is that the, the Swedish earthquake stations measured uh, source magnitudes of uh, 2.2 to 2.6 depending of on, on the Richter scale and well that's a very old unit for a seismologist uh, first of all and second of all well you can roughly equate that to the energy uh, of, of these these events and there the US Geological Service has published a rough table and that kind of equates to something like the force that a a 500 kilo detonation of TNT would generate. So there's now two things to ask. First of all, of course, the argument would be, okay, that's that's a lot of a lot of explosive, uh, and you need a military or something to do that. Well, that's not entirely true either, because for example, for seismic shooting, uh, charges in the range of 100 to 200 kilos of TNT are fairly normal for seismic shots. So it's not a massive amount of, of explosive that you would need. Second of all, actually, you would very likely not really need that much explosive because nobody says that this energy in, in, in the seismic waves comes actually from explosives. Uh, it can just as well just be the pipe bursting. And here the closest analogy that we have is also seismic air guns. Usually seismic air guns are just uh, basically watertight bottles uh, that have a volume between 20 and uh, the big ones to up to 200 liters that are filled with gas under enormous pressure of 150 to 200 bar and then the gas is released which which makes a massive bang which is uh, used as a as a source for for seismic shootings but yeah now imagine a pipe uh, like the, the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, which has a diameter of roughly half a meter and is filled with gas that is pressurized up to 300 bars, so even much more than a seismic air gun, and the volume of gas, which is very important here because that's what's driving the energy, is much bigger. So actually, these seismic uh, vibrations that were measured in Sweden can also be explained just by the pipe bursting itself. So you don't necessarily need that much explosives. So you could, for example, just take a much smaller explosive load. And if you read up on the internet uh, how to, to cut a four centimeter steel, uh, thick steel pipe with explosives, you'll easily find some solutions where the actual charge is below 10 kilos then there's always the argument that this charge, of course, needs to get down to the deep sea. And that's true, but water depth there is only 70 meters. So that is not really dramatic. Yes, it's a lot for divers, but uh, remotely operated vehicle technologies are available on, on the free market uh, 
that can go down to, to 300 meters and that for costs of less than 10,000 uh, euros. So actually getting a small charge that is less than 10 kilo uh, installed on a pipeline that is 70 meters down in the sea, you basically just need access to the explosives, you need some idea about subsea robotics and then you need a small surface craft and that can just be well, even a rowing boat or a sea kayak in the worst case, but probably any any small craft uh, would be enough. And well, you know that this area of the Baltic Sea is pretty busy. It's pretty close to uh, big shipping routes. So it's very easy to, to just go there with a small player graph, craft, deploy uh, the charges, have them on a, on, on a longer term uh, igniter so that they just ignite a few days after you've been there. And uh, yeah, that would explain everything that has been reported so far in the media. So you don't need any very fancy uh, submarine or military divers or stuff like that to deposit that charge there. So I'm not going into the details of how you would exactly do that for, for obvious reasons. But uh, yeah, I, I doubt that you really need this massive uh, technological advance for being able to do that. Uh, the position of the pipeline is actually not a problem at all because that is just openly recorded in uh, in in the sea chart, nautical charts. So you could just go there where it's uh, located on your nautical chart, could uh, lower an ROV with an explosive charge, a delayed uh, igniter, and that's it. So most people are actually not aware that most of the seabed infrastructure is really poorly protected. Most of it is not dug into the ground. Most of the pipelines of the cables, the internet cables, they're just lying on, on, on the seafloor. So you can't survey them, them often because going along with an AUV is a very complicated task. So it's very hard to protect the infrastructure. And as the robotics is advancing a lot, Actually, uh, this also means that this technology, the open source technology is available also to people who want to harm that infrastructure. So it doesn't necessarily need to be a main military actor. Uh, it can also be a small uh, unit. We don't have any clue who could, could have been it, but I just wanted to provide you with a little uh, background on uh, the physics and the, the marine technology background on this so that you can can make up your own mind and hopefully uh, the undergoing uh, investigations uh, will figure out something what has happened there. So with that I want to thank you a lot for watching. If you don't know my channel yet please subscribe. You get uh, information about uh, sea ice, arctic research and marine robotics here on this channel. So thanks a lot for watching and have a nice day.